My name is Michi Cass and I'm a creative director in Seattle and I'm going to talk to you today about creativity. Um, I spent about 20 years of my career working in ad agencies up and down the West Coast. Uh, for the past three years, I have been a group creative director at REI. So creativity is such an interesting subject because everyone is creative. That's what makes us individuals. But somewhere along the line, we all or a lot of people are taught to believe that they aren't creative. I've all had this personal belief that it has to do somewhere during the time they were in elementary school and they were in art class and they were told to draw within the lines. And they felt like if they didn't conform um, and if they drew outside the lines, then they weren't creative or doing it right. So when I look back on my own history, my personal history, uh, I was brought up by Jewish doctors from Australia. Uh, there were four girls in my family. We lived in Minnesota. Uh, my parents were very strict. We had a lot of rules. There was a definite path to success. But what I figured out was it was in between the rules is where I felt like I could be myself and where I could be creative and felt the most interesting. And my parents did a really good job with each one of us, helping us figure out, giving us the confidence and the space to figure out what we wanted to be and what we wanted to do. And what I quickly realized was where I felt the most happiness where I felt like I could be my best self and the most creative was outside the lines. So it made me really reflect on my past uh, 20 years and the amazingly creative agencies that I've been lucky enough to work, work at and the different creative directors that I had that really enabled me to do that work and to come up with these random weird ideas and bring them to life for many different clients. If you're like me, you like talking to things. Like, uh... Hello, Lamp. Hello, Gary. See? Hello, Pants. Thank you, Fish, for being here. You've spent more time looking for a show than watching one. She's over it. And you're in a show hole. So what I think it boiled down to was, how do you take these random thoughts and connect the dots and make it into something? How do you enable your team to take all of these random things and make them have a bigger meaning? How do you bring ideas to life? And that's the trickiest thing in an agency or in client side. So how do you bring all these ideas to life? How do you have a team of creatives who have many different ideas? How does it all come together um, to be one big idea? So let's talk about an agency structure. When you're in an agency, you're one degree separation from, from the brand. You're just friends with it. You go back to the agency, you're all working together towards one thing, which is pleasing a client. But when you're client side, you're one degree separation from the creative. You're just friends with it. You never leave the clients. They're always with you. And all of your clients have lots of creative ideas. So you are, are one step away from creative. 90% of ad agency creatives want to work brand side. And that's not the case. Even five years ago, going to work client side was considered career suicide. But even pre COVID times that we're in right now, so many clients are no longer agency of record. It's all just project work. So a lot of creators are realizing the benefits. But the number one question I get is, if I come to REI, will I recognize anything familiar from agency life? And that was my biggest worry too, when I first decided to go client side. I kept feeling like the things that made me successful in the agency, will that work once I get client side? Will I recognize anything once I get client side? Working agency side is more like a sprint and it's a race and there's a beginning, a middle and an end and you all prepare together, the gun goes off and you run. You have a client presentation, you have a new business pitch and you're all working towards something. There's the finish line and once you reach the finish line, you all celebrate. Working client side is more like this slow trot and it's a slow marathon and the path keeps changing and the leaders keep changing and you're not quite sure where you're going but you have to be very nimble and just go along with it and you're not sure if you've reached the end. Um, I can't tell you how many meetings we've had client side where we present the work and after we present the work, everyone says like, yay, so do we sell it? Are we done? 
and you realize, no, there's a whole other layer of senior leaders that you need to present work to. I'm asked quite often, what type of creatives succeed on client side? And through my three years when I was at REI, I had numerous creative directors who didn't succeed and creative directors who had great reputations, who'd worked in really good agencies, but it's pretty clear the type of creative who does well working client side, you cannot have an ego. You have to be very collaborative. You have to very have be very open-minded. Um, what made you successful in the agency? Being a creative voice that comes in the room and has all the answers, that doesn't work client side. It's way more of a collaborative experience. It's kind of like looking for a marriage versus dating. It's a long-term commitment. You wake up with the same people every day. It's not like agencies where you're working on different clients and you bop around. Here, you're with the same people every day, so you need to figure out how you work well together. And the biggest hurdle in my mind was every minute of your day is spoken for. So you are in meetings from the minute you walk in to the minute you leave. And a lot of the meetings have nothing to do with the work. And when I first started, I resisted it and thought, why do I have to go to these meetings? But then I slowly realized that like the more you get to learn the business, the better you are at coming up with creative solutions and strategically helping solve those problems. But it's a very different way of thinking because so many meetings that you're in have nothing to do with the actual work or pushing the work. It's the legwork that leads you up to that, which we all know is difficult because white space is where your best ideas come from. So how do you create that white space when you have every moment of your day spoken for? I pulled my whole team together, all 32 of them, and a designer said to me, we're creatives, but we don't feel creative. And that one just stung. Like, how can I lead a creative department that doesn't feel creative? Uh, when I first started, I did one-on-ones with everyone on my team. Um, I. I presented to them what my view, how I wanted the work to be. I talked about world-class creative. And one senior copywriter who'd been there 21 years said to me, why does everything we do have to be good? And it made me realize that in an agency, you walk into that culture where you all know you have to do your best work for everything. But client side, you have to build that culture. It was dependent on me to get everyone to that level. When I look back on what, what were my biggest client side mistakes, I definitely made a few of them. I think the biggest one that I made was I really tried to lead the work versus leading the people to do the work. Instead of putting the processes in place so you would consistently be doing good work, I jumped to let's, let's just get the work done. Like I'll be a part of the work, I'll pull up my sleeves and I'll get in the files. And that was not the way to build team morale. Uh, I also was way too concerned with how I showed up as an in-house GCD. Um, I didn't trust what my strengths are. I didn't trust my instincts. I kept feeling like I had to be and act a certain way. And then the other thing that I tried to do is I really wanted to protect my team from all the BS and, and all of the political maneuverings that are going on um, and solve all the problems myself instead of showing my emotional vulnerability and having them be part of the solution. Uh, it really fell on me to build and foster this creative culture. And that was new to me because I feel like in agencies, creative culture is there and you just kind of come in and you're a part of it. But in a, an internal um, creative team, client side, you need to energize the team, excite them, engage them, champion them, uh, keep them well fed, challenge them, protect them and inspire them. And it's all up to you to keep that culture going and to keep everyone really engaged. Ultimately, it's all about the work. And we did do some great work because we really were able to pull in all the right people and, and protect the creative culture and protect the work. So the common denominator in my mind of agency side and client side is we all work harder when we feel passionate and supported. And this goes back to my, the very beginning when I talked about creativity and when I was able to be the most creative and do my best work. And it's really fostering and supporting the team and helping them feel passionate about the work and passionate about the projects that they're doing. It all comes down to that spark. And that's what this is all, that's what creativity is a spark. Uh, it's the thing that I've always loved about what I do and excites me about what I do. Um, and when I can't find it, it's up to me to make it for my team. But ultimately in the end, in my mind, the proof of me living my values of living outside the lines is my kids. And about four years ago, four, four, four or five years ago, for Christmas, we got the kids an iPad and they ran upstairs and were very quiet for a few hours. And we heard a little bit of laughing. And then they came down and they put this video together, which I'm going to show you. And in my mind, 
that is the ultimate proof that this spark, this living outside the lines, if my kids can do this, um, and if I can foster that in them their whole life, then in my mind, I've succeeded. Con los terroristas. They do the Harlem shit.